the Bible. We've been doing a, an outline series on how and what the Bible is. Now, in this part, what we're at right now, we're, we're on Revelation. I don't mean the book of Revelation, but the revelation of the Word of God. We're looking at the factual basis, foundational stance of our King James Bible. And we're in the book of Revelation now, about Revelation, chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away the part, shall take away his part of the book of life, of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So, the actual book, that is the last of the days that we talked about in Hebrew last time. This is number five of the series. We talked about number four. In which God spoke to us. And he spoke to us through his son. What we talked about last time when we closed. To recognize whether it was him or not. In Revelation 22, 16, we find, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Prophes, uh, prophes, Revelation 22, 18 to 21. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if I, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testify these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with you all. Amen. So John signifies to us. It is Jesus Christ is doing the speaking, the revelation. It is Jesus Christ in, in Revelation 22, 16. Hey, it's me. It's Jesus. I'm the one that wrote this book. Again, we spoke the revelation of St. John Divine. That, that's wrong. Numerous individuals who are in other religions say, well, that one deals with the book of Revelation. You can't add to it or take away. It doesn't agree with the entire Bible. And I've got to say, oh, yes, it does. Hebrews 1, verse 1 and 2. God, who is sometimes times and in diverse manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed of all things, by whom also he made the world. Creation. Cre creation, creator, the author of the word of God. And then back to Revelation 22, 18 to 19, which, which we already read. It's of God. Will I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the word, words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life out of the holy city and out of those things which are written in the book. But it denotes to the entire Bible that since God has been speaking and in the last days in which he says, he'll speak broad in his son the last book is named the book of the book of the revelation of jesus christ not john no man is able to add or take away from it if you do there's serious consequences listen 
If you were to go into any of the works of Shakespeare, and if you were to take Shakespeare and say, I'm going to modernize Shakespeare, there's no judgment of hell. There's no judgment of the wrath of God upon you. Unfulfilled prophecy will one day be fulfilled. Well, I found this prophecy in the Bible. It hasn't been fulfilled. It will. Wait. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Imagine Bible correction. Off into eternity. Whether saved or lost, and I believe many are lost. And when they pass on to eternity, whether it's heaven or hell, the very word of God that they corrected will override eternity, future to come of what they wrote. What they wrote won't be in eternity, future. What God wrote, the Bible, the King James Bible, will be there in glory for all eternity. We have a complete and final written revelation of God. John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus Christ. And we beheld his glory. And the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. God the Father has revealed in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. John 1.18 No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Jesus Christ is the revelation of the eternal God, the Father. When you see Jesus, you saw you see God. John 14, verses 8 and 9. Philip says unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices. <coughs> Jesus said unto him, Have you been so have I have I been so long time with you? Yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou unto them, show us the Father? 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Wipes out the Jehovah Witness doctrine. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up to glory. Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. And when you see Jesus, you see God. 1 John 4, 2 and 3. Hereby we know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. It's not the Jehovah Witnesses. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it shall come. And even now already is in the world. You know, we talk about the Antichrist. The Antichrist. Which is true. There's the Antichrist coming. Forgive me, my throat. But there are Antichrists that come knocking on your door. Can we give you a watchtower? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God? No, he's not God. Then you're an Antichrist. Now... God has equipped me enough where I can work with them. I can deal with them. But John, tell you, don't even wish him a good afternoon. And when I'm done with him, sometimes I'll tell him, get the hell off. You don't believe my property where you're going to go if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as God. That's cruel. Well, God voices to us today through the Bible. God speaks to us through the Bible. In an audio voice, no, it's not. Now, I have God speak to me all the time. Does he? No. 
Well, tell me how God speaks. He speaks through his word. I'll be reading his, his word and, okay. He speaks to me in prayer. He speaks to me in the car. This is what you ought to be doing. This is what you ought not to be doing. He speaks to me sometimes. You know, a name will come to me. An old, old friend. Saved or lost or I don't know. They'll come into my... And I start praying for that name, that person I know. Well, how did he do it then? How did he speak to me through his word? <clears throat> the Christian life... And relations of growth and our salvation is that you have to rest upon the Bible. God's final and complete word. And if you don't rest upon the Bible and you are unsure of the word and you don't know where it's the King James, you don't know where it's the NIV, you have no idea what it is. You got no insurance. You got no assurance. Because the assurance and the speakability of God to us is through the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you, it is only through the King James Bible today. Now, if you happen to got a Geneva Bible, okay, but the Bible today is the King James Bible. There's no other version. To perceive God's voice. It's through his word, the Bible. And God does not speak through a NIV. God does not speak through an ASV. He does not speak through a New King James. He does not speak through any of that modern mess. He don't speak through the books that are on the shelves in a major or minor bookstore under the religious section. The only book that God will speak to man in a bookshelf of a bookstore, in a bookshelf of any place where books are, is the King James Bible. Every Christian ought to have one, ought to read it, ought to study it. Because that's God speaking to us. That is, he means he's going to speak. He will hold us answerable to it. Well, I don't have a King James Bible. You can get a King James Bible online free of charge. You can get a King James Bible. It can be read for you. It can be read by uh, uh, Alexander Scobie. There's some other places where you can get the Bible read to you. You can get a Bible read to you where it has music in the background and sound of, you know, where the shipwrecks of the Bible, where, you know, you got the waves and the ship rocking back and forth. And where, you know, maybe a shepherd with his sheep, you can hear, the, you know, they'll have the sheep beating. You're without excuse. Listen, for a time, even the Mormons, if you call them up and you can stand their nonsense of demonstrating to you their church, they will give you a free King James Bible. In the world of the internet and the smartphones, you can have a King James Bible. And if you don't have a King James Bible, you don't have a Bible, or you got a modern Bible, God is going to hold lost and saved people to the Word of God. The saved, because the Bible says, study and show thyself for proof unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly. You're supposed to have the King James Bible. And to the lost man, you're supposed to have a King James Bible. You know, there was a time in America, every home had the family Bible. My lost grandmother, probably most likely died and went to hell. 
had a family Bible. She brought it out a couple times, and she was interested in genealogy. She opened up that Bible. She could show us our family tree and, and all that nonsense. But she couldn't tell. She couldn't show me the way of salvation. She herself couldn't show how she was how she could be saved. The family Bible was a standard equipment of the old American homes. You can call a Baptist church and maybe Southern Baptist. You can call it, look in the, in the phone book under Baptist church and say, Baptist church, hi. I don't know why, but I need a King James Bible. Can you get me a King James Bible? Although the Bible, all through the Bible, he holds you responsible for it. I only read the New Testament. He's going to hold you responsible for the Old Testament. Well, I only bring it to church. He's going to hold you from Genesis to Revelation, the 66 books, and only the 66 books. Well, I find Numbers and Chronicles very boring. You're going to be held for Numbers and Chronicles. I'm going to be held to Numbers chapter 7. Now, if anybody's ever read and studied their Bible, Numbers chapter 7 is a very hard chapter to read. Every word. Every word of God is pure. I'm going to be held accountable for every word in Numbers chapter 7 with every chapter in the Bible. Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. You are supposed to attend... To what he declares in this book. You are supposed to tell others what the Bible says. It is the wife to ask her husband, Paul says, if she's got any question. It is we Christians to go into the world and preach the gospel. The gospel that comes out of the Bible. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Every man, more so from the Philadelphia church age to the present Laodicean church age, is going to be held accountable for the word of God. Listen, we've got something that even Jesus Christ walking and talking the 33 and a half years on this planet Earth. Jesus Christ did not have what we have, a completed Bible, completed word of God. Paul did not have a complete Bible that we have. We have the completed Bible and God is going to hold us accountable. And there will be no excuse. Because in the pages it says, Study to show thyself a food unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, my nose, excuse me. The complete Psalms 119, holy 176 verses, is a testimony as to in what God speaks to us through the Word. The longest chapter in the, in the Bible, Psalms 119, the foundation, the man frame, the ideal, the source, is about the Word of God. Imagine, the longest chapter in the Bible is about the Word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If the gospel is to be preached, if the gospel that is preached is not the gospel of Jesus Christ in the Bible, then God did not speak it to them. Galatians 1.8 But though we or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You say, well, what's another gospel? Paul said there's another gospel. There's another Jesus. There's another spirit. Well, you know, if you eat and drink the literal body of Jesus Christ in his blood, that's another gospel. Let them be accursed. I'll tell you another good one of Baptist Church. If you just say this prayer, or repeat after me this prayer, that's not that's another God. 
And when somebody's witnessing to you and they don't have scripture, that you don't need, I mean, you ought to have a Bible, but you can use King James Gospel Tracts for scripture. Fellowship Track League and Chick Tracts has scripture. If they did not bring you scripture, and you ended up praying a prayer to Jesus Christ. But I'm going to question. Because the only way you're going to know salvation, the only way you're going to know of Jesus Christ is through the word. If what they say doesn't match with the Bible, then God didn't speak it to them. If, they're, if, they, if they speak contradictions, and there are no contradictions in the Bible. If they say one thing and the Bible says another. If, if they're going to get rooms in heaven and Jesus said they're going to get a mansion. They are in the wrong and God is in the right. When the Bible clearly shows that when the, the final days of Jesus Christ, they had no idea about the, the death of their Messiah and the suffering of the Messiah. And when somebody comes in, oh, all the Old Testament saints look, look forward to Calvary. They are contradicting the word of God because if they look forward to Calvary, why weren't they waiting for the Messiah at Calvary? And consider Jesus a loser who died on that cross. Adding extra words or removing words to what the Bible says, then God did not speak to them. And these modern Bibles, and we'll look at some of them later, they add and they subtract to the word of God. That's not God. When God wrote his word from Genesis to Revelation, he did not need an eraser. The prophet is the proclaimer of God's truth. It does not mean you have to come up with unique material. Jesus Christ is coming back on April 30th, April 30th, April 30th. Jesus Christ is coming back on February 15th. Jesus Christ is coming back October 21st. Jesus Christ is coming back December 7th. Jesus, no, no. Jesus said, as far as the date, no angels, not even himself, only God the Father knows the date. How do you know the date that nobody knows the date? You know, when the blood moon rises on this, that's not in the Bible. And there are times that people have wrongly divided the word of God. They're taking, oh, you know, Matthew 24 in the church age and the rapture. Matthew 24 is not about the church and it's not about the church rapture. There is no church in Matthew. The church didn't come to Acts chapter 2 when they got saved by the preaching of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ by Peter. All the original material has already come up with by God, through God, authorized by God. It's in the Bible. And nowhere else. And the fact is that some guy comes up and he has a new revelation and he wants to sell a book and, and all other kind of nonsense. That's what it is. It's nonsense. When in doubt, check him out. Listen, let me tell you another thing right now. And let me tell you something. If your pastor gets upset at this, you need to find a new pastor. When your pastor and your Sunday school teacher quotes from the scriptures and you don't have time to go find the scriptures, 
You better write those scriptures down, go home and check out. You better check those cross references that the preacher is telling you out of that pulpit or podium. Better check them out. Because I've been in King James Bible believing churches and out of the pulpit, they have changed the King James Bible. And, and it's the church congregation sits there like dumb sheep. And I'm sitting here, you're wrong. You're wrong. You see, Stiley kicks. Stiley is a sheep of God that has a kick. So we finished conclusion the revelation. Lord willing, next week we'll pick up the final authority of the Bible. And that will run us that may be that may be one or two weeks. But we're we're gonna start looking next week into some of the perverted Bibles and what the perverted Bible says. So Lord willing, next week, the final authority.